Hello friends, welcome to Embrace the Question. My name is Steve, and in this episode we are going to talk about three realities. I'm taking this teaching from Matthew chapter 14, where we find Jesus has just fed the 5,000. I think it's worth noting that Jesus is mourning here. He is, he is mourning the death of John. He's just received the news that John's been killed by Herod. So Jesus takes the day and he ministers to the 5,000. He feeds the 5,000. And you know the story. Well, the 5,000 later have dispersed. Jesus tells his disciples to go get in a boat and cross the Sea of Galilee. Jesus himself walks up on the mountain to pray. So the disciples find themselves in a boat. Most of them are fishermen. Certainly a good number of them have plied their trade as fishermen and are probably handling the boat, not afraid of doing exactly what Jesus told them to do. Night falls and the wind comes up. And many have made note that this seems like a very supernatural storm, and I cannot disagree with that. The, the waves are coming up, the winds are ferocious, and the disciples are struggling. They are toiling in the boat. They are struggling to maintain composure, maintain the boat, and stay on course. They're just trying to, to bail. And in the midst of their struggle, here comes Jesus. This, yes, is the story of Peter walking on the water. This is where we start to identify the three realities. And I think it's going to be easiest if we start with those in the boat. That is one of the realities. Note that Jesus told the disciples to get in the boat. The boat was where they were supposed to be. They were in the right place. Yes, it seems like being in the middle of a lake in a storm, not wise, but they were exactly where Jesus had told them to be, in the boat, crossing the lake. I believe most believers fit into the category of those who are in the boat. The boat is an interesting thing. It's a very corporate means of transportation. There aren't people typically out of the boat that are going the same place as those in the boat. Everybody in the boat are going to a place together. Being in the boat is a place of community. One could not diverge. They were all going in the same direction. I believe this is a picture of the church. I believe most churchgoers find themselves in the boat. It is not a bad place to be. It certainly beats being in the water. Would you agree? So one of the realities is being in the boat. The problem with being in the boat Storms do affect those who are in the boat. Storms are scary. We don't always know how to weather the storm when we are together in the boat. These disciples certainly did not. They were freaking out, to put it in a very Americanese way. They were freaking out. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know if they were going to survive. The, the way perhaps Jesus would have had them assimilate their predicament was, we are exactly where we were told to be. Jesus himself told us to get in the boat and cross the lake. Perhaps we should relax. In fact, in a later story, we find Jesus in the boat with them, and Jesus is sleeping in the middle of a storm. Again, the disciples are freaking out. They believe they're going to sink, they're going to perish, and they tell Jesus, they wake him and tell him just that. Don't you care that we're all going to drown? And Jesus commands the storm to stop. I believe the point was that if you are where you're supposed to be, if you are where you are, or if you are where you are, are ordained to be, if I can get that out, no harm will come to you. You should relax. You should take a nap. So this is the way we behave when we are in the boat. This is the way believers should act in the midst of a storm. If we are truly where we are called to be together, 
going from point A to point B, and there's a lot of illustrations we could draw in that journey through life, we should take comfort in the fact that we were told to be in this boat together. Okay? So that's one reality. And, and that reality is characterized very much by the behavior of the believers in the boat, or as you might think, the non-believers in the boat. Because what we find out is some of the guys that are getting tossed in the storm in the boat are acting very much like those perhaps that are outside of the boat and both think they're going to perish. You understand the problem. That brings us to reality, reality number two, which are those outside of the boat. We, we see that briefly when Peter gets up to walk on the water with Jesus. He starts to doubt. He pays more attention to the wind and the waves than he does to the rabbi, and he falls down into the water. The water is not a good place to be. The water is a place of death. It's a place of coldness. It's a place where where there's really no hope. And the problem with those in the water is that they've never been anywhere else. They know really no different. They don't realize they're in a place of death. They don't, they, they do perhaps realize there's not a lot of hope where they are. That is why the boat should always be so inviting, right? Our second reality is the hopelessness of the water. Again, if you're in the water, if you are lost, if you are someone who does not know the rabbi, you don't know Jesus, then the water is a pretty helpless place to be. And those who are in the boat should pose such a drastic uh, difference in demeanor. Those in the boat should not be freaking out, should not be acting like they're perishing, just like those who are in the water. There should be such a marked difference between the two that those in the water should be saying, hey, how do I get into the boat? So it behooves us as those in the boat to realize that we should relax in the midst of the storm. That says more to those outside of the boat than anything else. But yes, there is a third reality. And that reality was demonstrated to us by Peter and Jesus. You see, Jesus is always found in this reality. Yes, we can find Jesus in the boat. But Jesus, he stays in the boat for our benefit. But he resides in this third reality, which is his father's government, the kingdom government, a place where a third reality trumps our reality. And this reality allows him to walk above the chaos. You say, well, Steve, that just doesn't jive because we can't walk on the water. But you just read the story in Matthew 14 of Peter walking on the water. Was Peter special or did he simply ask? to walk on the water. Rabbi, if it's you, then call me out of the boat. Because if you know about the chemistry between the rabbi and the disciple, the rabbi is trying to raise up those who are to be like him. So the rabbi has chosen those he believes in. He has faith in those who he chooses. The disciple says, Rabbi, you're walking on the water. If you're walking on the water, I can walk on the water too. Call me out there. What does Jesus say? Does he say, I don't, I, I just don't think you're ready yet, Peter. I, I, you, you've, you've really shown a lot of immaturity lately. You've made some bad decisions. It, it really wouldn't be a good idea for you to get out here because I know you, Peter, and for sure you're going to start paying attention to the wind and the waves and I'd just soon not have to deal with you. No, none of that happens. That's, that's, that's how we would behave in such a situation, but that's not how Jesus is. It's not how the rabbi behaves. The rabbi says, come, join me. Just that simple. The third reality is available. Just ask. It, it isn't perhaps a reality that we can dwell on permanently 
in this realm. Some may absolutely argue that, and if you want to share your thoughts on that very thing, just please leave them in the comments because I'm open. But I'm thinking that while we are residing here on earth, then we are supposed to be in the boat where he told us to be. But if there comes a time when we need to call on the superior reality of the kingdom, the superior reality of our Father that is available to us, and it's available, it's available because Jesus posted no limits. He posted no conditions on entering into that reality other than, hey, you want to come? Come. The miraculous is available to us. That third reality, we just have to believe. And there's a lot of sermons written on what broke down for Peter. His, his, his faith, right? A lot of people have said, well, oh, you have little faith. What does that mean? Faith in what, Peter? Our, our programmed Christianese answer to that would be, well, we just don't have enough faith in God. We don't have enough faith in Jesus. But in that particular instance, keep in mind that Jesus wasn't sinking. Peter's lack of faith wasn't a lack of faith in Jesus. Peter's lack of faith was a lack of faith in himself. And that is where the rubber meets the road, where we have to have faith in ourselves that we can be like our rabbi, the one who called us, the one who said, you can be like me. That, that was a very profound realization when I heard that the first time. God has faith in you. And so what broke down for Peter was his faith in himself to actually be like his rabbi and operate within this new set of rules, which, as I mentioned, trump all of our other, our reality, all of our laws of physics and, and those things that we find Jesus violating all the time. These are the three realities. Those in the boat, that's where we're supposed to be. Those outside of the boat, in the water, perishing without perhaps even knowing it but knowing no difference, knowing no alternative, having never experienced anything different, having really never seen anybody acting like they were safe in the boat because those in the boat are freaking out too. That's a shame, that's an indictment on us. And then the third reality, those who are walking above the chaos. And I believe we are all invited to share in that. In a time where there is a world full of chaos out there, I bless you and I pray for you and I tell you that you have the ability through our rabbi to experience this third reality of walking above the chaos just like he did in Genesis chapter 1 and the Spirit of God hovered over the waters all right hope this blessed blesses you if uh, if it does please like and subscribe and I will see you on the next teaching. Peace.